federal law that prevents the recognition of same-sex marriages is unconstitutional, and the Justice Department will no longer defend it. That was the word today from the Attorney General Eric Holder on the controversial Defense of Marriage Act, or DOMA. It defines marriage as a union between a man and a woman. The Attorney General wrote a letter to the House Speaker John Bader in which he indicated that section of the law on, legal, on legally married same-sex couples violates the equal protection component of the Fifth Amendment. A spokesman for Speaker Boehner responded that Americans want Washington to focus on creating jobs and cutting spending. And the president will have to explain why he thinks now is the appropriate time to stir up a controversial issue that sharply divides the nation. James Rosen with the two sides on this one, live in Washington. What's the immediate impact? How does this actually affect gay marriage, if at all? Well, for the moment, Shep, it doesn't. Where it was legal for same-sex couples to marry yesterday, it remains so tonight. But this shift in legal posture by the Obama administration comes as at least two lawsuits challenging DOMA are snaking their way through the courts. President Obama himself has long opposed same-sex marriages, but the White House suggested today that could change. He's grappling with the issue. Uh, but he, uh, again, I want to make the distinction between his personal views, uh, which he has discussed, and the legal issue, the legal decision that was made today. And while the Justice Department won't defend the law in court any longer, it will continue to enforce it, Shep. And, and now, <clears throat> now there's talk of repealing the whole thing, the whole defense of marriage law, right? Yes, within hours of Attorney General Holder's announcement, Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein of California announced that she will introduce a bill to repeal DOMA outright. But the Republican chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Lamar Smith of Texas, expressed his continued support for the existing law. In all, Shep, today's developments threaten to revive as a political issue just in time for the 2012 presidential cycle, one of the most polarizing debates over American culture and law. Shep. James Rosen, live in Washington. James, thanks. Time for tonight's rewrite. Up first, Fox News contributor Monica Crowley. I can't let you go without asking you about this breaking news we started the show with, which is now the administration has decided to declare that the Defense of Marriage Act, which declares marriage uh, as, defines marriage as between a man and a woman, signed by President Clinton, they, they, they have declared that that is unconstitutional and said that they are no longer going to enforce it. It's beyond belief, Megan. It's beyond belief. We are a nation of laws, not of men. We are governed by the rule of law. And what the Constitution says is that the President of the United States doesn't get to decide which laws he likes and which ones he's going to enforce. He is the chief executive. The law is on the books, the Defense of Marriage Act. It is his responsibility under the Constitution to enforce that law. To me, that is a form of dictatorship. That is Mubarak Obama. Mubarak Obama. Nice. Yeah, it would be a bad thing for the president to decide which laws he would enforce, as uh, Glenn Greenwald just pointed out here, and decide which laws he would not enforce. And President Obama knows that, which is why this president has specifically said he intends to continue to enforce the Defense of Marriage Act. What has changed today is simply that the Obama administration will no longer advance the faulty legal argument that the Defense of Marriage Act is constitutional in appeals court challenges to the law. There is no whiff of dictatorship in the president's decision. Indeed, President Obama was elected by more votes than George W. Bush ever got. So why else would anyone, anyone on Fox News want to combine the names Obama and Mubarak? 